And now to a News 4 Jack's I team investigation on the 10 o'clock news at 1030. Yeah, it's a life or death fight against human trafficking. Federal agents and local police are battling sex abuse on a daily basis in Jacksonville. A large number of the sex trafficking victims that we've been working over the last 10 years, unfortunately, they are deceased. A survivor now bravely telling her story. They moved me halfway across the country and completely isolated me from all of my family members, all of my friends. I was in a place where I didn't know anyone. I-team investigator Vic Michelucci looks at active local cases, which federal agents say show just a fraction of the sex slaves in Northeast Florida. And we want to warn you, viewer discretion is advised. You have got to help me get out of this. That is what one woman told an undercover officer in a prostitution sting, claiming her pimp would beat her. Like a man, almost daily. And he had a taser that he would shock her with when she did not do what he wanted. The details are disturbing. And these are real allegations of sex trade from open cases right here in Jacksonville. He said he was offered $10,000 to buy her. We combed through eight recent human trafficking arrests, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. She had anywhere between six to eight dates per day. Some of these sex slaves sold for more than $1,000 a day, money that goes to their captors. In exchange, the victims get food, a place to sleep, and drugs to make them more productive. The ecstasy would help her stay up, keep working and making money. And these are just the cases investigators know about. But my hardest part of my job is turning away cases. Just There's more cases than we can actually work. FBI Jacksonville Special Agent C.J. Goodman leads the Crimes Against Children and Human Trafficking Task Force here. Being a father himself, it takes a toll on him. How are these predators reaching the children? So predominantly we're seeing it online. It's not one social media website or app. It can be practically any of them. The predators often groom their victims with compliments, then companionship, money, and finally, drugs and alcohol. Their life is permanently much out there, and the traffickers will look through that for, um, again, those at-risk factors. Do they have problems with their parents? Do they have problems at school? Are they putting themselves out there sexually active? The person who I moved out there for the job started trafficking me. Tara Madison is a survivor, trafficked in the 90s as a teenager and a young adult, lured in by the promise of a job working promotions at biker events across the country. Dreams of good money and travel turned to a living nightmare. The relationship became extremely, extremely abusive and it was actually just like getting in, it was out. She gained her attacker's trust enough to work alone and ran. She now works across the country to help people identify trafficking and to assist victims breaking free. We work so hard to educate the public so that they can see the red flags of trafficking and identify what's happening in their own neighborhoods. Madison and Special Agent Goodman tell us people should focus their attention on mentoring vulnerable kids, minimizing their online risk, and giving them a stronger support system. Most of the local cases we looked at are still going through the legal system. The state attorney appointing specific prosecutors for these sex crimes. And while they do that, the first line of defense is at home. I wish it was a law enforcement only problem and we could just throw more um, agents or, or police or sheriffs, deputies at the problem, but it, it really does require a partnership with the community and, and especially with parents. It could just be a neighbor or a stepfather or a brother or a boyfriend who has a couple of teenage girls um, that he's soliciting out of the high school and he's trafficking them to older men. These cases are different, but there are some red flags to look out for victims may have unexplained injuries on their bodies. They may wear provocative clothing that's just not fitting for the situation or the current weather. They might have hotel keys, rolls of cash, multiple phones on them, and they are unable to make decisions on their own. The Human Trafficking Hotline, right there on the bottom of your screen, it's 1-888-373-7884. Eight, eight. You can also call local law enforcement. There's also a text number that we've posted in this story on news4jacks.com.
Vic, it's just eye-opening. Has the pandemic changed human trafficking? FBI agents, Mary, say yes. More people are online. They're inside their houses more. This gives their attackers more access to work under the radar. Also, more people are desperate for money nowadays to make factors which could make human trafficking even worse all across the country. Man, what a tragedy. Vic, thank you for your report. Now, we've posted resources to help sex trafficking victims, along with warning signs and quick access to the National Sex Trafficking Hotline on our website. You go to newsforjax.com and then look inside the story.